Welcome to the Computer Programming University, CPU, where learning is fun. So we're continuing our series here, or continuing our series here on scripting. And the last episode, we introduced the logic or conditionals of the if-then statement. So if this condition is true, so if LSS, then do this. Otherwise, do something else. All right, so we actually added another thing here we wanted to look for the user's input so I want the user to decide whether you want me to run the script or to exit so to to make that decision I added a yes and an N so Y and N yes Y for yes and N for no alright and we tested it and it actually worked let's actually show you that again so I'm gonna go add symbol colon and we can see I say yes and it outputs yes so you know that that actually works all right, so let's go back to the script. Now let's see if we can use the the conditional here, uh, the if then statement, to to test that that uh, response. Now let's just kind of let's be logical here. So I'm gonna see what if I just say if our variable up here desired action. I'm just gonna copy that. I'm not gonna retype it again. So if that variable equals and I'll just put in quotes we actually don't need quotes let's just let's just say I uh, y and I'm gonna comment out some of this some of this stuff that we don't need here let's comment that out comment that out comment that out and we can leave the fee I just want to test to see if this actually will work we're just being logical here right so if desired action variable is assigned to y, then let's just echo okay, and we'll just end it. We're not going to do an, uh, an else statement here because if it responds and says user responded with Y and I pressed Y then we'll know that this actually works alright that's all I need to know so let's go ahead and run this <clears throat> let's hit Y so as you can see it did not say what we wanted it to say so clearly there are some problems here with our script so we said if desired action equals Y well we know we know desired action does take the value of Y right because we tested it before what we're testing now is my ability to add it into the logic statement this is conditional if statement so I'm saying if this equals y and that didn't seem to work for us is it because we needed quotes let's add quotes and see what happens now this is just a single character so really you shouldn't expect it to need quotes well let's just see anyway so again we see it didn't respond as we expected it to so we know it has nothing to do with the quotes quotes would more be if you had like spaces and things like that there's really no need for quotes here so maybe it's a syntax do we need to put this this kind of a test into like maybe parentheses like this let's see what happens still nothing so maybe it's uh, maybe it's double parentheses, and this depends on what kind of shell you're using. This kind of formatting that I'm doing here will will vary depending on the shell. So let's go ahead and test that out and see what happens now. So now it just says Y, and then it says hello. Okay, so still not giving us the result because the result is it's supposed to say if this is true then do that user responded with why it's never saying that which means that somehow this test is failing okay and just to prove that that is actually the case let's actually re-enable this uh, this else here and let's give a response if statement statement failed all right So there it is, proof we know the if statement is actually failing. So let's try perhaps brackets. Maybe that's what works in, and whether it's single brackets or double brackets is going to depend on the syntax of the shell, and it's usually going to 
you know, is it a mathematical thing? There's certain rules about that. We'll cover that in, in other videos. So now we see there's now we see clearly this is not working. We see that it says if statement failed, but we also see it saying why not found no such file or directory. So clearly it's evaluating y as a file. So that's telling us a little bit of a clue in terms of what happens when you use those brackets. You can see clearly the way it's interpreting this is quite different. All right, so let's go ahead and try this. So again, you can see it's still again looking for an actual file. So now we know that that again a clear distinction of between the the parentheses and the brackets. Now let's try there's another symbol you may be able to use. Let's see maybe curly brackets. Maybe that's what we need. Let's try that out. Still getting the same thing. All right, so clearly this is not working. So we need to do something different. But what is it? Well, let's pay the bills, and when we get back, we'll answer that question. And we're back. So the first thing I want to do is I want to clue you guys in on a little something that we were doing before. So we were messing around with these brackets and we had the square brackets and we were using the parentheses so what is the difference between these two either either option didn't work here but still I want to let you guys know what it's all about so numeric expressions are going to be in parentheses so you can actually have uh, double parentheses for a numeric expression and for a string expression you're going to use brackets so that's why when we had it in brackets you see we're getting errors about file you know references and things like that so that's just, just a little a little note put that down in your notebook so you can reference that in future episodes all right okay so let's fix this first of all you remember I specifically said the parentheses were for numerical expressions and the brackets were for string expressions so if that's the case then isn't that saying that I need to have the brackets? I mean, it seems logical, right? So, I mean, if those are the rules, then those are the rules. So let's add our brackets. But we already did this, didn't we? And what was the result? The result was a failure. Because syntax is probably wrong. So let's see if we can add in these quotes again. Now you might think you don't need the quotes, especially for the why, but there are syntax rules that you need to abide by. Now one thing I'm already noting is you can see here, you can see this is color code, right? So you can see the variable is in purple as it is up here. And our basic text here, our string, just y, is in red, just like this. This is just text is in red. Just observe that. All right, so we put them in, in quotes. And what happens now? Still doesn't work. Perhaps there's a little change we might need to make here. What if we add a space here and we add a space here? What's going to happen now? User responded with Y. Yes, we got it. So there you have it. All right. So we do need to have them in quotes like you see here. Now, another thing to note is that you can actually, there's another way to say this, instead of the equal sign, you can go dash EQ. All right. So let's see what happens when I do that. there you go so that actually worked all right so you can do dash EQ you can use dash and E and a lot of different options as well G T L E G E so these all mean different things is equal to is not equal to is less than is greater than all right so a lot of different options um, and these are these are basically the way you can evaluate these strings whether they're equal or whatever the, the condition is so now that we know, see the methodology that we're using here. 
before we proceed into making this do what we want it to do, we want to test our, uh, our, you know, our methodology to see if it actually works. So can we do it this way? And we actually successfully tested it where we're able to accept a person saying yes or no and it, it, the condition holds true that, you know, so we can basically evaluate that whatever they're typing in meets a certain condition. So we can evaluate whether the response is equal to this particular value. Therefore, by us doing that, we can now have conditional responses. So if you typed in Y, I'm going to do this. You type in anything else, I'm going to do something else. Okay? So now, what I want to do here is let's be a little bit smarter. Like, that's the whole point of this tutorial, ongoing tutorial. We keep stepping it up a notch, making it more complex, making it smarter, making it better. So what happens if the user... We gotta make this idiot proof, man. Make your scripts idiot proof. So what if the what if the user does this? Even though you typed in lowercase y, I'm gonna type in uppercase y. It's the same thing, right? Let's see. User responded with y. So as you can see, it actually did not matter whether you typed in uppercase or lowercase. All right? Because now when we look at it, we're seeing that it's evaluating. It's still evaluating as y. Now let's check something else out. This seemed to work before with the equal sign, but what happens when we try to run it again? All right, and these are good things to see so we can get the logic of how this works, right? If statement failed, will you look at that? So now it fails. When we use the equal sign, Hmm, why did it do that? So when I use the equal sign, it is case sensitive, and when I use the dash EQ, it's not? Hmm. So let's test that theory, and also let me teach you a little bit something about regular expressions. So I'm going to say, rather than us just accepting Y, let's look at the potential that they might type in lowercase or uppercase y. So I'm doing a regular expression. That's what a regular expression is. This is actually going to evaluate as lowercase or uppercase. So I'm setting a range of, of things. So the string here is equal to lowercase or uppercase y. Or if I added another letter, let's just add this for uh, just an example. I could put an O in there. So O would also evaluate as well. All right, so if they type in lowercase y, uppercase y, or o, it's going to evaluate as true, or it should anyway. Let's see what happens. So let's go at symbol and colon. Let's type in uppercase y, which was failing before. If statement failed. All right, so that did not evaluate the way we expected it to. All right, but... Again, let's go and let's go and let's say dash EQ. What happens when I do that? All right. So now I get an arithmetic syntax error, which we weren't getting before. So this regular expression here is, it appears to be creating a problem in our script. Let's go back to how we had it before. So just lowercase y using the dash EQ. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this, capital Y, and it evaluates. So you see that works. Take a mental note of what's happening here, all right? So when we use the dash EQ, it's case insensitive. And it also doesn't appear to evaluate regular expressions the way you might expect, all right? When you use the equal sign, it appears to be case sensitive so it wants you to type in exactly what you see there and again the regular expressions didn't seem to work in that instance all right so let's take this to 
the next level in the next episode. We actually ran out of time here. If this was helpful for you, if you enjoyed this experience here at CPU, the Computer Programming University, go ahead and click on subscribe. It's one click, takes one second, and it's critical to the success of this channel, which will allow me to do more videos like this, which take a lot of time, a lot of time and effort. It's actually Saturday right now. It's a beautiful day, and I'm here doing these videos. So say thank you by subscribing, thumbs up the video, share the video. Really appreciate it. This is a Computer Programming University.